everyone, I'm Mandy Landefeld with Sumptuous Living, and we are here at the Atlanta location of the Country Living Fair in Stone Mountain, Georgia. If you haven't been to this fair, it is the best. You can get all of your shopping done, have a great time with all your girlfriends, and get to come and see fun people like me who might share some yummy, yummy, yummy cocktails and food and design ideas, there's great talent. So make sure if you are in Atlanta this weekend, come to the fair for sure. Grab all your friends and come on over. I am gonna share with you today our fall themed sips and nibbles. You know, cocktails make holidays a lot more tolerable with your family. So when you're gathered with all your family, though we love them, alcohol makes it better. So let's get to doing some really creative cocktails that you can set out for your Thanksgiving spread, for your Christmas spread, or just enjoy on these little chilly crisp nights by the fire pit with all of your friends and family. It's so much fun. And today we're doing two different cocktails. We're going to do a um, ginger rum shandy with spiced ginger simple syrup. And this one here is a harvest sangria. Isn't it gorgeous? Isn't it so Beautiful. cute in the mason jars? Big, fat mason jars, first off, they're really easy to be able to mix and kind of shake your sangria together. And then they, plus they're pretty. You could even use them as like a centerpiece if you wanted to, except for the fact that you actually want to drink it. So um, where both of these start, we start with the same simple syrup. And a simple syrup is actually very simple. It's equal parts sugar and water that you infuse whatever flavor you want to into the simple syrup. And today's one, we're using ginger, which is the perfect way to use up your ginger. And I'm about to give you a really cool tip for how to get the most out of your ginger. And then we also have uh, cinnamon sticks, which, you know, are always handy. And actually super cheap if you get them in the Hispanic or the international aisle. They sell for half the price than when you buy them in the actual spice aisle, so make sure you look for them there. There's a lot of spices there that can save you a lot of money if you buy them in the international aisle. And then the other thing we're using is star anise. And it kind of, it's, first off, it's pretty. It's gorgeous. And it has a licorice -y type of a flavor. Really, really pretty. And that spice gives your simple syrup really great flavor. So... Getting back to our ginger, when you bring a hand of ginger home, if you peel it and then cut it into chunks of the size that you would use for your cooking, and in those like two inch chunks, put them into a Ziploc bag in your freezer, then whenever you need ginger, you take out one of those chunks, still frozen, and grate it with a little like zester or microplane grater or just your box grater straight into your food and it winds up being like ginger snow into your food. Great, super easy when it's frozen, but what you do with the peels when you peel it is you use the peels to make a ginger simple syrup. And it makes the most amazing like sodas for at home. My kids totally use it all the time. They'll do like grapefruit and ginger with club soda from our soda stream. And it really makes it so that you're eating a lot less sugar because it's only equal parts sugar and water. So that's how you use the best of your ginger. And then you never have that stringy ginger that's been sitting in your fridge forever and a day. And it turns into, you know, so I don't, no one ever knows what, how to use all their ginger. So with that, we have gone ahead and made this gorgeous little simple syrup. And I always strain all the botanical stuff out. You put your sugar and your water in let it come to a boil, add in all of your good stuff, and let it sit. Sit, sit, sit. It can sit all day. The more it sits and comes to um, room temperature, the better, and that's how it gets nice and infused with all those flavors. But when you store it, you have to remove all of the botanicals out of it because that's what makes it get funky. But it'll keep for two weeks at least in a mason jar in your fridge without, as long as it doesn't have any of those botanicals. So, we're going to use that to make, our first cocktail is this really yummy, a shandy is a cocktail made with beer, so you can just tell your husband that it's a cocktail with beer and he'll love you, and we are starting first with apple cider, really good apple cider, goes in, and lime juice, which cuts the sweetness of our simple syrup, it really gives the drink a brightness and a freshness. Our gorgeous simple syrup goes into, and rum, 
you can catch our um, these recipes if you want the recipe on sumptuous living blog our blog is a lifestyle blog that is fantastic and teaches you how to do everything approachably because we all don't need to go to therapy just to live an amazing life so you can have a killer cocktail really great recipes really great food and then at, at country living on the app we have the recipe fully completely downloadable so make sure when you're here at the fair you download the app because not only do you find out everything you could possibly need to know about the ins and outs and what's happening on the fair but you also get all these great handouts and things that you can print at home so with that too we're going to go ahead and add in some beer we're going to top that off with beer i'm using a pilsner you can use you could use a um, a stout, a porter, anything that's nice and deep and dark. Man, the best part, if you are smart and do it in a mason jar, is that is your own cocktail shaker. But then you also don't have to pour it out because then you're going to drink it straight from there. So, cheers. Feel good? Mmm. It might only be 10 o'clock, but I'm a, Louis a Louisiana girl from Miami, so <laughs> there's someone more tipsy than me right now. Anyway, so. Mm -hmm. It's never too early with mm -hmm. me. Baby. Oh, oh, so good. Dang. All right, so next, we're going to go ahead and make our harvest sangria. And I've got a pitcher here with apples and oranges and cranberries. You could do pears. You could do those crisp, gorgeous Asian pears um, that are kind of like a hybrid between an apple and a pear. And I'm going to add in some cinnamon sticks. I'm going to add in a couple star anise. If I wanted to, I could add in some chunks of ginger. And to that, I'm going to pour in some cranberry juice because cranberries are totally in season. And this is perfect for Christmas, for um, Thanksgiving, for all through the holidays. If you are one who does trick-or-treating with like the neighborhood and you all have little roadies as you're going through trick-or-treating with the kids this is the perfect thing to put in your cup too we always host our neighborhood um, for a big batch of soup right before going trick-or-treating then we're also going to add our gorgeous simple syrup super yum in to our juice and sangria is never sangria if it doesn't have a hard alcohol in it. it, has to have brandy, cognac, vodka, something in it. If it doesn't have liquor in it, it's just fruity wine. And we're not drinking fruity wine, we're drinking sangria. So you have to have some hooch. And I'm a hooch mama, I'm not a wino, although this is wine both. This is kind of like a combination of the two. So we're doing our this is an Applejack brandy, really yummy. And then the last part is a lovely white wine. You can use a real fruity one if you like your sangria sweeter. You can use a dry one if you don't. I'm not the biggest on sweet. I like my um, cocktails. I'm a hit me hard, hit me strong kind of girl, raised right. But if you want yours a little sweeter, you can totally do that. Again, it's your own kitchen, and then we give this a stir, and I like to leave this overnight. And when you're making cocktails, you can batch ahead, especially the shandy you can batch ahead. Just don't add the lime juice until the last minute. Anytime you have any kind of lemon juice or lime juice in your cocktails, as long as you leave that out, the cocktail will be fantastically easy to, um, to go ahead and batch ahead of time. You could also switch out and do one part wine, one part champagne. If you add the champagne, at the, if you want it a little bubbly, you can get totally creative with your cocktails. And then after this has sat, I love to go ahead and pull out some of our gorgeous fruit because of course that's the best part, especially drunken fruit. Mm. You know, we can just say it's like, it, it's a salad and a cocktail at the same time. That's right, right? <laughs> that makes sense. All right. <laughs> And then go ahead and pour our beautiful, look at how pretty, isn't it festive? And for the shandy, even if you wanted to do it like a sugar rim, you could do that, like a spiced sugar rim, that would be yummy and fun, but so pretty. And it's got that kind of amber glow that's perfect for the fall, so that you really know that you're drinking a harvest sangria, especially with the cranberries. But even the cranberries, after they have, um, soaked up all that yummy flavor overnight 
raw cranberries isn't something you would totally normally eat, but I love eating these, right, Renee? I mean, like, we had the, when we made these for the blog, it was, we were like, oh my gosh, the cranberries are delicious. So, anyways, cheers for that. And then we're next, we're going to make a butternut squash bruschetta with goat cheese. Oh, it's so good. Oh, perfect. It's so sippable. This happens to be um, one of my team's, both of these are one of my team's favorite cocktails. They're perfect for the holidays. Aren't they cute? They're adorable. Super cute. All right, so next we are going to make appetizers. And you know, when you're hosting for the holidays, this is the type of stuff that you can make ahead. Do that. Make yourself a happy person. First off, make a cocktail while you're cooking, no matter what time it is. And then you're happier to cook for a million people. And then secondly, just have things that you can at least do parts of ahead of time. And that's what makes entertaining so much easier and so much fun. So we have butternut squash, which nowadays you can buy already cubed in the package. And they go on sale all the time. In fact, we, they were on sale this week. And I recently broke my wrist fell down the stairs chasing after my little eight-year-old's hiney. It's a really adorable hiney and it's very irresistible and I'm squishing it and I broke my wrist. So cutting through a butternut squash is hard work. There's a tip though, if you microwave the whole squash for what, four minutes, right? So four minutes in your microwave, that makes it so much easier to cut through. You will be like, why did I not do this? Like all every other time that I've done it. So if you insist on having them for whole squashes might nuke it first and it will make your life a million times easier. It'll cut like a dream and then you go ahead and you're going to roast it on a sheet pan, a big sheet pan like this with a little bit of um, salt, pepper, olive oil. But the next trick, and this works with potatoes too, is to add a little chicken stock to it and that little bit of liquid makes them not stick, helps them cook quicker because the steam and the roasting together make it go faster. And then you take them out just before they turn to utter mush. They still need to have some kind of um, hold to them, which makes sense because you don't want like a mushy thing. So we're going to take, this is ciabatta bread that I've just toasted underneath the broiler. I didn't even put any olive oil or anything on it. I'm going to take gorgeous goat cheese, which in my next life I'm going to come back as like a goat cheese formaggio because I love <laughs> goat cheese. And you need to toast the bread. Why? Because we have squishy goat cheese and squishy butternut squash. And, you know, you need that crisp flavor of the goat cheese. I mean, of the bread to go ahead and kind of counterbalance it. So we're going to go ahead and smear that on. We're just going to do a couple of them so you guys can see how pretty. But you can have all of this prepped and ready to go. If someone comes into your house and asks what they can help do, let them help you do stuff. That is smart thinking in every way. So here we've got, see how cute? They're just perfectly roasted, seasoned with salt, pepper. If you love Creole seasoning, which I do, you can totally add that to it. Add a little nutmeg if you wanted to. Whatever your favorite spice blend is. Then next we have, this is the jam, literally. It's the jam. And we've got onions that I simply sauteed in salt, pepper, and olive oil, and then put them in the food processor with nothing more than fig preserves and some balsamic vinegar. And it makes this stuff that's like crack. I mean, you will put it on biscuits, you will put it on pork loin, you will put it on a million different things, and it is so easy. And if you are invited to someone's house for dinner, which hopefully all of us are, it's the best thing ever, but show up with a jar of this and they will love you forever and you will always be invited back. So drizzle some of that on top with some chopped roasted pistachios for that, again, extra crunch since we have butternut squash and some fresh thyme. I love fresh thyme, but if you wanted to do chopped sage, you can. Um, not everyone loves sage. Um, pretty much everybody loves thyme. You could easily do chopped rosemary too, but isn't that so pretty? Mm, so Gorgeous. Pretty. And I love like even appetizery type of dinners, you know, where you have cocktails, you have, you all get to eat and just nosh. You could make even flatbread pizzas. If you didn't want to do the ciabatta, you could make this into a lovely flatbread pizza with naan or with um, little 
pita pockets even that are pocketless. So here we've got our sangria. We've got our gorgeous shandy, which I may not actually give up because that's going to be in my face in a minute also. So, <laughs> and it's so pretty. And there's, um, you could also do sweet potato if you wanted to or acorn squash, whatever you had on hand. Really, really, really delicious. This would be so cute with a sugar rim. We could easily add another little um, cinnamon stick into our thing. And you can garnish with a piece of apple, a slice of apple in there with a the cute little skewer. Do all kinds of fun little garnishes. Well, thanks everybody Beautiful. for coming and sharing some Facebook time with me. I hope you get it together to go ahead and bring your friends and your family to the fair. It's so much fun. It's nice and nippy today. We all have our cozy sweaters on. I can't wait to do some shopping after the show. We'll see you later. Happy shopping.